swim tit treads you me makes us dream away Hit the right button. You hit it. What is the best question you can ask? The one you just asked. Wait, who am I? Listen, what questions remain unresolved for you? Who am I? You're just giving me a headache with this stuff. Before we say roll em, Fern Doc, we have to know whether Joyce was a or not. Now you say I said that, but I have no memory of saying that. Come on! <laughs> Roll them for a duck! We know that the lemon is really the metaphor for the two eyeballs. This is Gregor Slalius speaking. You know me. You know me. When I came to this country, homeless and penniless, I walked up to people, asked for five dollars, and said, You know me. You know me, even though I'm inscrutable. I was brought here, not against my will, to <clears throat> comment on behalf of the brother side of the Vic. A remake of Orson Welles' The Other Side of the Wind. My film, the important one, is the brother side of the wheel. The plot, you know. Director dies, suicide, accident, uh, like Frederick March, he, in Star is Born, he goes out into the ocean, disappears, they cut, and he goes home and plays canasta, who knows. But, what my film really is about is an inquiry into the existential question. Tell me something good that you never had but you've always wanted. In my opinion, I agree with Muddy Waters who sang, you can't miss what you never had. Putting it a different way, 
if you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? I would answer, of course, Gigaverto. However, as for you, you must find your own answer and your own chair. My aesthetic always is formal, which is to say minimal, except, you know, like Vertov, I'm all over the map. You know, sticking with blues and rhythm and blues, it was Johnny Otis who said, advised all the people, Big Maybell and Big Mama Thornton and Sugar Pie Santo, all of them, he said, don't scratch but it don't itch. I satisfy my cinematic itch with its equivalent scratch and no more. If the camera suddenly performs a 360 degree pan, it is literally out of my hands. Look at it this way. Think of it this way. Think of a lemon as a metaphor. That's another approach to the making of my film. I recollect a quote by Garcia Lorca who said, Bunuel has made a little shit of a film called The Andalusian Dog, and The Andalusian Dog is me. To conclude, I have another existential question for all of you. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't know. But I leave you with this. I paraphrase, not a blues person, but an astrologer, a very famous one. He's up in the beyond somewhere, up in Saturn. Carol Reiter, who said, The stars impel, they do not compel. What you make of your life is largely up to you. I say, the film impels, it does not compel what you make of my film is largely up to you. miss what you never had. My name is Jerry Yelka and welcome to the brother side of the wake. This is a reimagining of Orson Welles' film, The Other Side of the Wind. 
He's shot Touch of Evil right here on Speedway many years ago in the 50s. We're making a student film. Can we ask you three quick questions? Sir, we're making a student film. Can we ask you three quick questions? I'm good. Dude, dude. Dude, dude, dude. Stop for one second. One second. Oh, man. Oh, this guy. The running guy. Can we ask you a quick question? Dude. Can we ask you a couple quick questions? We're making a student film. Well, it's, You're uh, the greatest runner on Venice Beach. What institution? What institution? It's just an independent student film. It's a student of life? Yeah. If you were a chair, who would you want to wait, sit Wait, wait, wait. First of all, wait a minute. A student film. Who's, what? What's the name of the student? The student is me, Jerry Fialka, and the name of the film is Brother Sideways. <laughs> Welcome. Now, let's see if I remember. To the brother side of the way. You have nothing to lose but your metaphors. You know me. I believe that Orson was actually my metaphor in disguise. This lemon juice will zap and purify those precious rowdy lemons. And then we remake, no, we demake, no, we refake the other side of the wind. The brother side of the wake is an accident. It's an accent that's happening right now to me. I'm just going to the movies, dude. I eat mean, popcorn. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I had an epiphany. Like Lincoln. In the universe. When something's a lemon, it's like, it, it, it's not good. It's very sour, and, and it's really not working for you. It's a lemon. It's just not working. It's sour. Well, Bruno thinks he's the director of this film, right, Bruno? And <laughs> if he was a chair, he'd want his kid to sit on him. We know down at the Venice Boardwalk how many people want to be chairs and have people sit on them. If you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? That's an interesting question. I don't think it would be anything or anybody interesting or famous. Probably just like the people in my life that I love that think have nice butts that I think have nice butts. Probably Gandhi because he's light. Benjamin Franklin. Lady Gaga. Somebody little? Somebody small? Oh man. I don't have an answer there. This lovely girl right here. My wife. Oh. I'd probably say nobody. I don't want people sitting on me. To be honest, like no one. <laughs> no one's the valid answer. <laughs> Betty Boop, of course. Actually, Betty I'll, Boop is my first I'll, thought. I would want Gumby to sit on me. I would want somebody completely unexpected. My unborn child. So they, they have a nice place to rest. I would have to explain to them, you know, that Jerry Fialka turned me into a chair, and it's not permanent, hopefully. Not my second husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you don't want to see. Well, who at would his you lowest want? weight, he was at 250. <laughs> But who would you want to sit on you if you were a chair? A baby. Ah, you scored. That's good. The identification of time with woman. The river, the constant flow. And as we all know, universal space has no meaning or shape.
I hear a siren now. And what some would say the siren represents in dreams is turbulence in, in your mind. So whenever you hear a siren, you can look at that as a representation of, of your, your mind becoming turbulent. And, and sometimes it's good to be turbulent. Sometimes you want to hear the siren. What he creates, he has to wreck. You know me, Gregor here. Metaphor. I needed a little juice to finish the titles on bro side here. See, bro side. Oh, 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 wow, that's a lot of blood. Oh, uh, uh. oh, 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 ow, that hurts. Oh, uh, ah, uh. ah, uh. ah, uh. ah, uh. excuse me, ma'am. Do you know who you are? Yes. You do? She's certain. Do you know who you are? Not really. Do you know what you are? Not really. Do you know who you are? I believe I do. And do you know what you are? I believe I do. beauty of Orson Welles' film, The Other Side of the Wind, is that it never got made. You're supposed to finish your film! <laughs> Do you know the great, the great line is, uh, Picasso was caught, dressed up as a, as a janitor, snuck into an art museum and started touching up one of his paintings. And they caught him and they go, you can't deface paintings? And he goes, I'm the artist. It's like, who are you to remake a genius's film that hasn't been released, right? It's, you don't know what it is, and you're remaking it. You know me. <laughs> it was a way to get away forget the problems of the day. The other side of the wind concludes as Hannaford's voice says cut. And then the film ends. Well, that's a powerful ending because Orson and John Huston, the star of the film who was played Hannaford, both knew it never ends. They knew the film would never get made. Ha 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 ha. How do you make a film that never that you know will never get released. Orson Welles just continuing to do the movie and John Huston continuing and saying this is it, this is it, this is exactly what we want and how we're doing it and it's the, it's the process of making the film as opposed to the whatever it becomes because when it becomes something it's over. When it becomes something it's done. The other side of the wind was an adventure. Add to your venture. Shared by people that finally came to nothing. Nothing is what we want. Say that all together, audience. Nothing, nothing is, is what, what we, we want. want. Isn't that fun? Okay. This reads like a birdhouse, but you think of it as a lemon. Life gave me a lot of lemons, so I made lemonade. Oh, I've never heard that before. The brother's side of the wake is not the same as the story of Helen of Troy. 
the other side of the wind might be. If you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? Um, Leonardo da Vinci. I'd like to transcend beyond the chair. You would Even like to sit on what? I would like to transcend beyond the chair so that I would be more than that. You Even would want to transcend chair. beyond the chair. You don't want to just settle for being a chair. Don't shoot for the stars. We already know what's there. Shoot for the space between the stars. Because that's where the real mystery is. Hey, how's it going? First question is, if you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? No one. My girlfriend. John Lennon. Cardi B. Katy Perry. Christy Brinkley. Serena. The Queen of England. I'll say Jesus. Jeez, you know, you might say Orson Welles, but he was so... <laughs> Me. Bibbidi bidi dop do brother Jerry. Bibbidi bidi dop do ba ha ha. Bibbidi bidi dop do brother Jerry. Bibbidi bidi dop do where them titreds you make makes us dream away. It opens up our chakras to the genuine fake. Can't you hear me howling? Ah, brother, I be calling, oh, brother, side of the week, brother, side of the week, brother, side of the week, brother, side of the week. Oh man, I'm going over the script for Bro Side right now. I noticed they had the word tetrad in the script, and uh, it was appropriate because our film here actually is all about the tetrad. This is Marshall McLuhan's four questions. He calls it a tetrad, I call it uh, deconstruction. Because in deconstructing the film, my life, any moment, I create enough pathways for my brain to come up with multiple stories about what that event was. And some of them are good for me, and some of them aren't. So we were lucky because I, I wanted to give someone a little hand in finding old films. Look at this. Right off the bat, we found an old film case. And what was in it but lemon. Brother side of the way. Brother side of the way. Brother side of the way. Great googly moogly. The brother side of the way. And we found another film case, that 16 millimeter film. And what was in it? This property of Joey Icon. More lemons. Joey Icon. What does Broside enhance? What does Broside render obsolete? What does Broside retrieve? And what does bro Broside flip into when pressed to an extreme? That's the reversal. So. We need to get some more lemons uh, for our boardwalk shoot today. So there's one. Whoa! I think human beings are characters in film. Not always true. In our films, it's lemons. Okay, let's try to get. Oh, you know me, Lemon. 
side of the way. It's like, you know, Orson Welles made a film called The Other Side of the Wind, yes. and it never came out. It's still 40 years. And we're, we're remaking it before it even comes out. Not just the wind, but things emerge there, and they're not—they're not what they become. They're only what they start off being: a notion, an essence, a smell, a sound. And it's only by referencing the next sound, and the next essence, and the next blow of wind, or the next space between that blow of wind that starts um, giving well, in a weird way this is the film giving life to something after the fact how to remove movie projector from book this is how to turn a lemon into a movie projector. We've got two reels of 16 millimeter film. Can you smell that? That is some moldy film. What did I eat for breakfast? chair, who would you want to sit on you? Lady Gaga. Anyone that needed a seat. Somebody who needs to sit down. <laughs> My long deceased grandfather. I'd probably want this guy. And what's his name? David. David. Wow, that's a weird question. A Salisbury steak with ketchup. Hi, I'm Joe Nucci. I'm here to discuss my movie, The Brother Side of the Wake. No, 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 no. The paradoxical side the paradox. Paradox is reflective. The contradiction is uh, it's, it has both an offensive and defensive mode in it. So one of them says you're wrong, the other one's a surprise. That you might be right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you can embrace contradiction, then you can have an epiphany. Yeah, there are a lot of different realities that we can exist in. You can exist um, in a place um, where kind of past and future don't really exist, but they all exist as one. If 
you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? Santa Claus. The Pope. Nobody. <laughs> Film. Can I, we still, I love you? students. I love students. Could we ask? Is the end of the day, the seal going to be in it? He is He's in it. He's a student. <laughs> could We're we, all could, students. Could we ask you a couple quick questions? Yeah, I like okay. questions. Quick the questions. First, yeah, the first one is, if you were a chair, who would you want to sit Mahogany. on? Mahogany. Oh, oh, no, sorry. No, if you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? Uh, Angelina Jolie. A chair is still a chair, even when there's no one sitting there. Nobody. Justin Bieber. Krishna. That's a good answer. What's her name? Brenna. And if you were a chair, who would you want to sit on you? Well, I guess I'm going to have to say Oh, him. my <laughs> God. That was too easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The lemon is now outside the box, outside the box. chair, who would you want to sit on you? Can I say a person that passed? Sure, you can say anybody. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Betty White. Gloria Trevi. Who would I want to sit on me? Yeah. Si fueras una silla, ¿quién querrías que se siente encima tuya? I think uh, a soft person, like, uh, you know, like fat and soft. Aphrodite. No one. My fiance. Susie Walia! <laughs> well, I, how about one of the philosophical questions? Hello. Too bad we didn't see. So we're gonna just jump right into this because everything's digital schmidgital here. Let me get the right program up here. We're gonna pull up an image. Look at that beautiful typewriter. And right here, the text on our computer says there is no telling how it will affect you. You can just be nothing floating in nothing yeah so we're we're here talking so we're creative and and there's a timeline so there's a time what? there's a timeline there's a timeline yeah. these two things absolutely declare existence right now you're existing so because of that somebody thought of this 
And because of that, there's a secret. <laughs>
Revolve, revolve. Orson Welles is film. It's the possibility that it could go on forever. And your remake of it is the possibility that it could go on forever and kind of almost a likelihood because the film has never been released. It's almost been released. The game's almost been over, but it ain't over. a good breath man yeah. that's what this that's is all about lot. breathing yeah a lot that's the answer a lot of things i've never had an amazing journey into outer space on a spaceship recognition to be the president i never wanted to be beethoven Beethoven went deaf later on in his life. Tell me something good you never had and you never want. A super expensive car? A Lamborghini. Money. Good answer, go ahead. Say a million bucks. Massive amount of money. Extraordinary luxury. Boats, furs. A lot of money. I don't know, all the money of the world. A whole pile of gold. What would you do with a billion dollars? You'd get bored. How many lobsters can you eat? No animals were harmed. Got with the lobsters. I'm happy to say. Man, I don't know. I want everything, I think. You want everything? Yeah. I want it all. And whether it's good or bad? Yeah. Wow. The um, amount of money to do massive amounts of drugs. Uh, some weird drugs like ayahuasca. A heroin. Heroin addiction. A swing set in our yard. Surfing a big wave. The ability to play cello. Oh, I have to get back to you on that one. I don't know. I don't believe in getting bad, so I wouldn't be able to answer that. <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, it's kind of crippled. Dreaming. <laughs> Can we actually have intention and have that come through, or we just have to work with like the clay of it all, you know, and molding? We can't really mold it, but we can just sort of play around with it. You think, you know, a basic question. Uh oh, there's the answer. You need to get it. Hello? This is Gregor Slelius. Well, I'm in the midst of an interview. I, 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 I'm happy that you called, uh, but do, do you think you could put it off a, a bit later? You know me? <laughs> you better know uh, can, me. Can I, can, what phone could I reach you on? You took my line. <laughs> it's okay. I will call. You call me. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Bye. Sorry. Don't be sorry, man. That's all right. So are we watching it happen or are we making it happen? Phone's ringing. You bet it's ringing real loud. And it's trying to interrupt us. We won't let it know how. We can't ignore the ring unless we got something to do. Thank God we're pixeling. Baby, I love to pixel with you. Love to pixel with you. You. You, you, you. Listen. Everybody.
be long to know. Who put the ram in the Ramalama ding dong? Up to you. You see what you look for. You see what you look for. Tell me something good you never had and you never want. Fame. Fame? To date another yoga instructor. To be another person. I think it would be nice to maybe trade places with someone for a day, but I'm just happy as me. I never had a a functional family, but if I did have a functional family, I wouldn't be the person I am today, so I'd never want that. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pain in life. I mean, I'm not living in it, but I see it, and there's always been a lot of pain in life. Why endure all this? Why suffer more of what you know is going to happen? Yeah because you don't know what the secret is. I really concentrate on doing this good. 24 dots per dot, frames per dot, seconds per dot. One on each frame. We've got 16 millimeter film. We're painting on each individual frame. All oh, goopy film. Tell me something good you never had and you never want. It's good you never had it and you never want it. The nuclear plasma that's heating our uh, faces. A potted plant, a house plant. Having a really good yeah. talent at a sport. A wife. Mayonnaise. Why don't you just turn this damn movie off right now? The best way to experience cinema was with one's eyes closed. Now that sounds absurd because you're sitting in a theater or on your dead at home watching on your social media device and you want to have your eyes open no we want you to have your eyes shut because everything is stupid everybody Get this guy off my set. 
one great movie director told a film historian, we should stop making films because the chemicals are killing Mother Nature. Well, everything humans invent has an effect on Mother Nature. And it's how we cope with the services and disservices of any human invention. And my consciousness from this session is going from the computer into Mother Nature. The potential disservice of film is that it, um, it can dissolve the self. Dissolve! Dissolve! We think when the movie ends, it ends. The movie doesn't end. The movie continues because you continue to talk about it. So that's the piece of art never ends. It's created and it's forever reverberating. Tell me something good you never had and you never want. Tell me something good. The sunset is good. But, you, but I never had it. I mean, it was, it's never been mine. It's everybody. Right. So, oh, and, that, I never, and I never want it. You know, I had, a, I had, a, be selfish. I had an answer like that once. Gail Zappa, Frank Zappa's wife, said, a forest. It's yeah. good. She never had one. She never wanted look, it. Look, look at it. Look. There you go. You can have that one. It's a good one, isn't look it? Look at that one. There's plenty of those for everybody. I like it. Can you escape time? Is time... Why in hell would I want to? Right. But is time escapable? I think some people have a great longing for it. 
and they are in our institutions because their longing to escape is very, very great. And it's, I'm sorry that we've turned it into that kind of a place. So you can escape. I guess I'm admitting to it, huh? <laughs> I, I've escaped time in a way. I've been more conscious in dreams than in some movies though. Like, okay, it's time to wake up stuff and I don't like this one. <laughs> I can't wait for my next dream. Or yeah, I, I dig this dream and I don't want to wake up. I mean, I have those two, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, because Harry Smith said that the purpose of cinema is to put people to sleep. Now people go, well, no, I've been in movies and I've fallen asleep. No, that's because in this dream state, which is what happens when you sleep, you don't usually dream awake. In the dopamine kind of? Yeah, that's where we're sharing that experience. So Yoko Ono says, if you dream a dream alone, it's a dream. It's a dream. But if you dream a dream with other people, it's reality. Well, I, I like that take on it. I don't know if it's reality. <laughs> it's sociological. We're asking people on the street what's the best thing for a human being. Love. I was going to say somebody to love you. Love. Romantic love. 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 A nice mom. Happiness. Happiness. Eye contact. <laughs> Look inside the eyes of your brother and see yourself. Woo! <laughs> Have some love, love your brother. Love your neighbor. You love yourself. To follow your intuition you can achieve the highest levels of existence if you follow your intuition. And I feel like anyone can, can achieve bliss and happiness if they allow themselves to. To surrender, this is transcendental beyond the gunas of material existence. It's not religion, dharma, adharma, anything. Surrender. Is it beyond all of this simple surrender? Hare Krishna. Joy Icon is walking down the boards. He looks up, sees t shirts. Bob Marley, cool, nice t shirt. Jimi Hendrix, nice t-shirt. Kurt Cobain, nice t-shirt. John Lennon, nice t-shirt. Hey, Jim Morrison, nice t-shirt. Then she's a shirt of him. Joy Icon. I made it! I'm on a t-shirt in Venice, I made it! And then he puts his arm through his body. Then he looks up at the rack of t-shirts, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Oh, I'm dead too. We have life, transcend death. We have love, we have beauty, we have togetherness, we have harmony. Big giant buildings have big giant reserves with rivers where people can swim. They live in teepees, man. When the storms come, pack that shit up, go back up in the mountains. You don't have to worry about fire damage, firemen everywhere trying to save this and that. Fire rolls, pipes underground, building, messing up the hillsides. Go back to nature, man. Now. Give him a big hand. Grease the wheels! What's the best thing for a human being? Love. 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 World peace. Peace. The peace, you know.
positive and be happy every day. World peace, water, cooperation, humility. Let me show you. This, this lemon. Can you talk about how the lemon affects the film? Yeah. <laughs> you want. <laughs> Bruno wants content again, oh my god! We don't know what cinema does to us, we just embrace it. How can moving images be used to unweave the spell of print? We would hope it puts you to sleep. So that's the whole purpose of trying to unravel film. Next question is, Tell what's me. the best thing for a human being? The best thing for a human being is love, without a doubt. Love and peace. That'd be love. Happiness. Happiness. Very good. Those, anything, are possible. anything is possible. Like a good spiritual, like, consciousness. Understanding. Hooping, of course. Hooping, yeah! Okay, bonus. God. Yeah! And she said, wow, you must be a, a magic bird. Then she came back to the person's house and said, well, can I live with you and go back and forth? And can you give me a cage and some food? Because I haven't been fed since a week ago, since you fed me. And then I had to stay at this other person's house. And she didn't feed me, but she sort of thought that I was a person. But you really know that I'm a person bird. They said, maybe we should give this money to homeless people or some people. So they did that. Okay, bonus question. They say the journey uh -huh. is more important than the destination. All right. Why do we have to name and pursue a destination if the journey is more important? Well, I don't think we need to have a destination. I think the journey, your journey is the main thing. That you should just go ahead with your journey and not worry about where you're going to get to. Or else the whole journey is just pointless. You're just going to walk around without a place to go. Or at least a fantasy of a place to go. Nobody does that. Even if you're just walking around, even if you're lost, you still always have in mind of a certain place you want to go. You know what? Study psychogeography. That's what a planner is. That's what you do. You wander aimlessly and then you find things. <laughs> We're already here.
you know, our destination should actually be to be here, you know, inside and to be here where we're at right now. I think that's a good point. Be here now. Yeah, Tree right, man, right. you're growing, dude. Growing. I am growing, bro, <laughs> because, of, because of fertilizers like you, bro. <laughs> what does it all mean? Say what's more important, the journey or the destination? I think we should always ask that because as long as we continue to ask that, we we'll continue to talk to each other. Being displaced, it measures that just in a numerical value, 44,000 times a second. It can measure it 400,000 times a second. It would be more accurate, and it could be measured 4 billion times. But it's never going to be infinity. And it's never going to be completely, perfectly accurate, per se, you know. And that's the difference between something that's continuous and something that's discrete, you know. And so there's an infinite, continuous, whatever, number of, of possibilities. And so, and we may pick out like one single discrete possibility. You look at how big the world is and how big the universe is and how big time, you know, you, the more you zoom out, the more you're just aware of how insignificant you are and how insignificant we are, really in the grand scheme of things and and so you know it's just not important for me to to place myself uh, or to try to make sense of that and place myself in this one discrete possibility of of an infinite amount of possibilities and it's just it's not worth making sense out of that Why do we have to name a destination or say that's where I'm after? It's a simplification for the purpose of human understanding. You have to be goal driven, otherwise your journey has no root. You're not going to have a journey if you don't have a destination. You've got to have a plan first. It gives us a um, point to reach, something to aim for. I might make an analogy that it is fun to suffer an itch because when you scratch the itch, you would think you only remove the suffering, but there is something that feels so good about the removal of the itch. And the journey creates a fantasy beyond reality. more of the script in there. So there's your characters. There's a dog with a fire hydrant. That reminds us of our Tetrad script. Look at the color juxtaposition. At this point we process the feedback we got from our test screens. And now we can flip it into feed forward instead of feedback. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> they say the journey is more important than the destination. Then why do we seek a destination? Why do we even have to name a destination if the journey is more important? 
people. I don't see that we do. <laughs> what are you, a flaneur? You know what psychogeography is? Yes. But most people think, well, I have to have a goal. I have to have I'm a I'm very goal-oriented, so I guess my, my answers might be surprising for that reason. If you don't know where you're going, how can you go anywhere? We always long for something, you know? We want to see the finish. You must walk with open eyes, and you will see the path that you seek. That's the reality. It's everything you do that you think is getting you there, wherever there is. And the fact is you never really arrive. We need some time of motivation to keep going. Like, okay, this is where I'm going to get, and that's, you know, that's your motivation to go on the journey. Even if the destination is just being free and wandering, that's still a goal. That's a destination. To fulfill ourselves and, like, whatever conceptual, like, dreams we're attached to. Is there a destination? I've been without a flight plan for a few years now. If you don't seek the destination, the journey is just stumbling and bumbling in the planets of spinning around the universe, brother. Run on, brother. Direction. Run on. Keep on. The last thing, Joe. Okay, the this last one. Really and good. I'm out of here. Yeah, and I'm leaving. You're out of here. I got done, things to do, Jerry. Yeah, I've got people to avoid places to miss and emails uh, to delete. What does the destination have to do with seeking? You better enjoy the journey because the next step could be off the edge of the cliff. So you better enjoy the run up. Everything's going to carry out in a specific way. When things happen, it's going to lead to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. But you can change what that thing is and it'll create something else. My journey has taken to me to where I am now, which is the single most important place. Because we need a general north to our compass of morality to keep us grounded. There must be something within us that just makes us chase the next thing all the time. And I guess that's part of the answer. I'm the director of this film, and the true title of this film is The True Side of the Tree Man. We don't have to die. All the joy. All the wonder are lost. We live forever. Ooh. Johannes Slelius. Joy Icon. Walk on water. Brother Joey animates metaphor of brother side of the lake through water skiing. To wake is creation of ripples. Behind him, his own ripples, fleeting tracks disappearing in the water in the moment they are made. Observe to honor what you look for.
Life is like a lemon tree. Sometimes there's these sharp thorns. Sometimes to get the best ones, you have to go all the way to the top. But if you didn't have to climb very high for it, it may not be full of all of the juice that comes from the ones at the top. The mathematics of her mama feast touches the window at a cardinal point of view. Does Birdie really know what she's doing or just looking for food? Oral allusions could occupy homespun homing pigeons. Would the harpies be homeless? We tend to think of time as a why, like a zipper closing up as all the possibilities of the future become the fixed past. But maybe it isn't a why, maybe it's an X, and all the past is just as open as the future. Why a brown beak when an ex-chicken crosses the road? Action! Wait, who am I? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Let's... What? No, that was good, dude. That was good. I screwed it. Bruno, up. Bruno, oh, go like. Was that a good take? That was a good. No, that was a good take. We're gonna do that whole thing one more time for the world. Can I ask the same question? Yes. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> There ain't no content in this film! Where's the content?